This meeting is being recorded. Can you get the feedback for a second? There, it seems to be gone. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the October meeting of the Boulder Housing Advisory Board. I'm uh, Michael Lucchese, the chair of HABM. Happy to see our fellow board members uh, and um, citizen commenters present. Um, so calling the meeting to order, and we'll do roll call to see if we have a quorum. Uh, Julianne Ramsey, are you present? Here. Are you? Thank you. Point, point of order, Michael. I don't think we're recording yet. Oh, uh, I, I got a message that we were. Oh, did we? Okay, great. Sorry. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, I Thank see you. it. Said it's recording. Uh, Philip Ogren. You clicked. I'm here. Great. Um, Terry Bamos. Yes, sir. Great. Danny Teodoro. I don't think Danny is here, but we have four present. And um, Danny sometimes joins us late. I'm hoping you'll do that. Uh, uh, we do have a quorum, so we'll proceed with the meeting. Um, item number two on the agenda is reviewing the agenda. Uh, item three will be approval of the September minutes, which are included in the packet for the meeting. Uh, we'll have public participation following that. And before we have public participation, Jay Signet will read some of the rules uh, regarding um, public comment, open comment. Uh, item five is matters from the board. We'll be uh, discussing um, ADUs uh, this evening, and we actually will have a recommendation uh, on the table for a potential vote. We'll be discussing future listening sessions. Uh, <laughs> Previously, we talked about waiting until we were in live meetings again to do a listening session, and um, that day may be uh, coming. Um, by the way, uh, I know that I see Danny Torridor. Danny Torridor, are you present? I I am. Can you hear me? That's wonderful. Yes, we can. Okay. All right. Our, vice chair, our vice chair is uh, here. We not only have a quorum, we have a hundred percent. So thank you all for being here. Okay. Um, We'll also be discussing combining the November and December meetings into one meeting to work around holidays. Uh, item six is matters to the staff, from staff, and that will include a discussion of returning to in-person meetings in November. Um, and then we'll be talking about um, tomorrow night's council study session on inclusionary housing update. Uh, item seven will be a meeting debrief and we'll try to adjourn by uh, nine. Um, any questions before we keep going? Nope. Okay. Item three, uh, approval of the meetings from September 28th. Do I have a motion from the board to approve our minutes from that meeting? So moved. Oh, okay. that, no, I'm sorry. Never mind. I, I, I refrain. I wasn't there. <laughs> okay. Is there a second? Yes. I, I can't. Yeah, I can't. Oh, move. you can't because you're vice chair. Sure. Okay. Move. Yeah. I think <laughs> I, I see Terry moving. I move to approve the minutes. I'm moving. I'm Great. Moving. We have a second? <laughs> second. Okay. All in favor of approving the September 28th minutes, say aye. Thank you. Abstain. Uh, looks like we have a four nothing vote with one abstention from Danny who was absent from the meeting. Uh, before we move on to public participation, I'll ask Jay to review um, some of the rules around that. And then we'll be, looks like we do have some members of the public here to comment. Thank you, Michael. So um, I'm going to share the rules. And you might notice we do not have our board secretary tonight. So Tiffany is uh, on vacation, very well deserved vacation. So please have patience. I'm trying to do her job and mine at the same time. Um, so I can't guarantee everything is going to go smoothly. Uh, just some quick rules. I think everybody should be familiar with um, how our virtual meetings have been uh, going for the last since during the beginning of the pandemic. So we're trying to create a meaningful, transparent engagement um, and balance that with online security. So uh, it's to the, the purpose is to conduct business of the city of Boulder. Our cases that disrupt, delay, or otherwise interfere are prohibited. Um, the time for speaking or asking questions may be 
So no person shall speak except when recognized by the person presiding, which is Michael, as the chair. Um, and he should not speak for longer than the time allotted. Um, I did figure out how to get the timer in a small box, so it's not um, on the big screen. Uh, each person shall register to speak. So if you if your name is not uh, properly displayed, please uh, change that. If you cannot figure out how to do that, just let me know. Um, and no video is permitted for people um, sharing their thoughts with the board. Uh, only the board members, employees, and um, invited speakers are allowed to do that. Uh, Michael shall enforce these rules as chair. Um, and please keep in mind the chat function is really just to make sure um, there, to address any technical uh, issues. Please do not try to communicate with the board on specific issues. Philip, you got a question? Yeah, um, I've been kind of curious about how the time limit works. It seems like uh, uh, people who arrive to, to make a comment have three minutes to just say whatever they want. But then um, I have noticed also that um, at the end of the three minutes, maybe someone like a uh, particular Michael will ask a question or a follow, make a follow-up comment. Mm -hmm. Is there some, like, I don't, I don't quite understand what the, what the ethos is supposed to be for engagement with people who are commenting. Um, if, if we're encouraged to ask questions or make comments about what they said, and, and if that somehow extends their time, um, I'm just kind of curious to know what, what the guidelines are around that. Sure, it, I mean, it's really up to the board members. So um, if someone's taking the time to be at the meeting and share their thoughts, I think it's, it's common courtesy to, you know, if you do have questions, to ask them questions. So um, the three minutes is just purely the amount of time they have to share. If a, if a board member wants to ask questions, um, it's really up to the chair to decide how long that should go. Does that make sense? Is that helpful? And if, if, if I could, just, uh, you know, basically all, all, all these local uh, local entity public boards go off of essentially a uh, very modified Robert, Robert's rule of order. And um, so having a discussion during public comment with, with someone speaking from the public is usually um, kind of unorthodox. So if there's a clarification, I think it, would, it should run through the chair if there's something we need to have a clarification on. And then typically after public comment closes, then there's an opportunity to address those things. So if there's a clarification, I would say that for all of us, we should address the chair if, if we have something we need to address with somebody because just as a matter of orderly process, that's that's just usually the way it goes so that we don't run, um, kind of run off course and stuff like that off of the, um, the, the typical um, order um, reflective of Robert's rules, so. And it becomes Dan's point is well taken. It becomes more important when the board is actually making a decision. Yeah. Um, and since the housing advisory board is purely advisory, um, it's it's less of an issue. If you're planning board making a quasi judicial um, decision, then it would be much more important to sort of limit the scope. And I definitely agree with that, Jay. Great. And um, as far as the clarification goes, is that uh kind of the board's prerogative i mean the chair's prerogative or anybody on the board for asking a follow-up question to clarify i would say anybody on the board can ask a clarifying question sure yeah okay great i'm glad we talked about that anything else on that <laughs> well that that was a little uh those two answers i got from danny and jay i uh, feel like they're on other ends of the spectrum so uh, someone just polite me. Let let me know if I'm out of I'm out, I'm out of line. <laughs> yeah, Michael. Michael will do that for you. Yeah, that. I'll, I'll be polite. I'll be very polite. <laughs> um, okay, I think we are now ready for public participation. Um, I'm going to go from the bottom right of my screen, and someone needs to mute their phone because we're getting background noise. Okay, I think that took care of it. Thank you. Um, this person is listed as um, Sonnet Grant. Lynn, you need to um, uh, stop your video, please. No, thank you. Um, I'm sorry, Lynn. That is uh, again, went against one of those rules. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We're going to start with Sonnet Grant. I am listening to you, but I'm going to go walk a few steps and grab my dinner. So uh, please say hi, identify yourself, and tell us what you have, what's on your mind. 
Uh, hi, um, thank you. <laughs> um, I just actually wanted to sit in the meeting and um, hear what you guys had to say. I don't really have any other comments. <laughs> Thanks for doing this. Okay, well, then I didn't get my dinner yet. Uh, well, thank oh, you. Thank you. <laughs> you want me to talk longer? So you <laughs> no, 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 I don't. <laughs> uh, we'll go to Fran Babrow, if I pronounce that correctly. Nope. Hey, Michael, not everybody may want to testify. So I think you want to um, ask people to raise their hands, remember? Oh, OK. OK, well, we do have a hand raised. We'll start with Kurt Norback then. OK, can you hear me? We can hear you, Kurt. Great. Uh, I'm Kurt Norback. Uh, I'm following up on an email that I sent you. Hopefully, you received that yesterday. I'm a member of the Boulder Housing Network, Better Boulder Subcommittee on ADUs, but I'm speaking just for myself right now. So there are a couple of items that I wanted to raise that go beyond the suggestions that that subcommittee sent to you. And so I just wanted to raise them for your consideration. One is the possibility of allowing condo conversion of properties with ADUs, which I believe are currently not allowed. As you probably know, uh, the, the biggest challenge in terms of housing that we face, especially for middle income people in this city is home ownership. Rentals are relatively affordable. Home ownership is unattainable for almost everybody, even at the middle income level. And so it seems like allowing count condo conversion of properties with ADUs would allow then for a home ownership possibility of the ADU at a relatively affordable price, you know, kind of the same as a typical condo. So significantly more affordable than a standard detached dwelling unit. And so I, it seems like that would be worth consideration. In addition, condo conversion would make, would probably make the primary dwelling somewhat more affordable because you know people would 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 it would the condo conversion would detract a bit from the attractiveness of that dwelling unit. So that's one thing. The second one is the owner occupancy requirement. This obviously is a sensitive issue, but if we want to really achieve more ADUs, if ADUs are a housing typology that we want to encourage, and I think that it is, it's certainly one that I want to encourage, and I think it's one that the board wants to encourage and city council wants to encourage, then I think it's worth consideration of how we can allow non-owner occupied ADUs in a way that avoids the problems that could result from just allowing them across the board. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of concerns about that. Uh, and so I suggested a few possibilities, like oh, not, not allowing, not allowing non-owner occupied uh, ADUs in sort of student focused areas like the Hill or Martin Acres, or applying a, um, a saturation limit to, if we remove the saturation limit from ADUs generally, <coughs> apply a saturation limit to non-owner occupied ADUs, um, or maybe something you know with with uh, the the rental licensing and so on. So I would just encourage you to think about creative ways that we could allow non-owner occupied ADUs to get more while avoiding the the possibly concomitant problems. Thank you. Thank you, Kurt. Um, I th I'm going to suggest that we discuss these additional recommendations when we get to our ADU uh, portion of the agenda uh, quite soon. Um, those are great comments. Thank you. Do we have additional people who would like to raise their hand and offer a public comment? Okay, oh, Lynn Siegel. Lynn, are you ready? You're muted at the moment. There you go. 
executed. So I'd like to be able to speak, but I can't because of your over administrating your site. I agree with Kurt. I think that we need to make it so that people can buy one bedroom or a half of a house or a lot of things like that, or just buy equity in a place um, in some manner. And there's always gonna be the problem of CU students if we expand CU South. It's gonna be a living hell for Boulder. And I wanted to make a comment also on 123, Proposition 123 on affordable housing. And that is a big no. Philanthropy is the barometer of social injustice. 123 will bring $300 million to those who are in housing crisis. But you know what it will cost? $1.5 million in more unaffordable housing and more of a housing crisis. It is a trick question, 123 is. Yes, like the library, everybody loves the library, but giving the city a $10 million slush fund, they don't know that, the people that are voting for the library. And the people that are voting for 123 don't know that they're making housing crisis worse. Now, do you realize every time that you set money in matching funds for federal or for state funds, you don't get that free. You, you think you just get that free? No, no, no. That goes with growth. And the more that you have growth, the more you have a problem with jobs housing imbalance, when there's not a linkage fee, an appropriate one, when it's gone from all the way from 20 to 25%, in decades, and when the impact fees, the true impact fees, are $130 a square foot, and the developer is paying $30 a square foot. That is a problem. That is a problem for the Housing Advisory Board to plead to city council to stop subsidizing the developer and making wealth inequity worse and increasing the housing crisis. I wonder if there's anything that any of you don't understand about what I've just said. Because it is abs absolutely how the system operates. And I really think we need to have a sit down, you know, where we can debate these things out instead of me just talking into a black hole to every single board because it all makes a difference. Planning board, transportation advisory board, water resources advisory board, open space board of trustees, environmental advisory board, they're all interactive and they all have a huge problem when it comes to CU South and when it comes to these jobs housing imbalance and the inclusionary zoning that needs to take place. To be fair, it would probably be not 25%, but probably 140% would be a fair amount for the developer to have to pay because they are causing more of the problem and you are sticking it, you know what, 123, it's sticking it right back on the taxpayer because it's a Tabor reimbursement that you get and that taxpayer would get that Tabor money back. Instead, they are paying for something. Nothing <laughs> is free. I'm sorry, your time is up. Done, Jay. Nothing's free. Think about it. Yep. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Lynn. And I'm sorry, I uh, my clock disappeared from the screen, so I wasn't sure if Lynn was running or not. Um, I think we understand what you say, Lynn. You have a valid point of view. Uh, I want to thank you for um, introducing the topic of 123. I want to be sure everyone's aware that affordable housing is on the ballot as a statewide issue. And please study that issue and decide how you'd like to vote on it. It's a very important one. Um, do we have uh, other folks who would like to comment? I don't see any other hands raised. Okay, going once. Um, we're gonna move on to matters from the board, item five. Uh, we had a really good discussion on ADUs last month 
And uh, we now have a draft of a uh, list of potential po topics to recommend the council. Um, we got great input from uh, housing advocates in Boulder, from members of the Housing Advisory Board in shaping this list. It's actually a package that we could endorse, adopt, and pass on as recommendation as a whole, or we could go through it one by one. Um, so I'll open it up for discussion of the board. You've all had a good chance to review this and see what you think. Uh, Danny. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, Michael, I thought the letter is uh, fantastic. I uh, loved all the points in there. Um, I'm sorry, it's stuck in uh, LAX airport for the meeting last uh, last month, but I've, I've uh, you know, been well apprised of everything going on and stuff, and I've read it, and I, I wholeheartedly support uh, the contents of the recommendation, and um, uh, I'm happy to um, move that forward to the uh, city council as is, or with any modifications anybody feels are important. Okay, thank you for that. Thank you. Comment. Terry, you gotta have something. We're gonna go down the line. Everybody's gotta speak about this. All right, you're muted, Terry. I love it. Let's send it in. It's great. I, I will say this though. There's a couple things in there that I I think big picture, the pendulum, I mean, if this all gets adopted, which I don't know if it will, but that pendulum will have swung quite a bit the other way. And I think that's okay. But let's see if it gets adopted. Thank you, Terry. Um, we will have more discussion about this, but this is kind of our straw poll here. Uh, Julianne. Uh, I think it included everything that we talked about last meeting, which is good. You didn't leave anything out. Um, yeah, that's about it. I think that it's very thorough and that it includes everything that we've already discussed, which is great. Good work. Philip, you're on. Um, yeah, I, I uh, really love this letter of recommendation. I hope that city council will consider it and give it, give it um, some energy. Um, I think, um, you know, I, I, I actually wordsmithed a bunch of this, so I, I like the way it reads. Um, I, uh, the, the one, one thing I wanted to say is, um, uh, it might be nice to have um, an additional recommendation that basically says something along the lines of HAB is, um, uh, you know, we recognize that uh, there's a bunch of simple changes that we can make to liberalize um, and encourage more ADUs uh, and, that, and that we're making those in this letter. Uh, uh, but that there's also other things that are kind of more complex that deserve consideration too. Uh, and they are the, you know, the following things that aren't really in the recommendation letter. Um, and, uh, and just encourage city council to, to, to circle back on this again in two or three years. I can't remember how many years it's been since the last time, but um, it hasn't been super long since the last time. It shouldn't be super long till the next time. Um, the, the thing, the things on that list that I think uh, that should go on that list, like uh, what, what Kurt was talking about with uh, with condo um, conversion, I think is a is a wonderful idea. I don't know if it's something that we can, you know, put in there, but you know, right right this minute. Like I don't know. If, I, I mean, I don't know what the effort is in, involved with that. It feels like something that requires maybe more research and more. Um, uh, you know, kind of do, do some of the heavy lifting before we just dump it off on the city council. But I don't know, maybe city council is ready to weigh in on condo conversion. To me, it sounds like something that's kind of complicated. And the reason I say that is because um, 
I actually brought this up on the very first time we talked about ADUs earlier in the summer because I um, uh, and I didn't know I didn't know it was called condo conversion. I was just I was just asking if if there's a mechanism to buy uh, buy ADUs. Um, personally, I would love there to be because to me it seems like another opportunity for um, market rate affordable housing. Um, and um, so that that's one that I mean I think the other thing that he mentioned with uh, owner occupancy um, that one feels kind of fuzzy in my brain about what you know what what the I think I understand what the problem is I think I sort of kind of understand what he's suggesting although I don't know what I I, I mean the spirit of what he's suggesting I don't I don't know what the actual suggestion is um, but it feels like something we could just put in and say hey. Uh, Let's anticipate this for the next time. And then the third one is the um, is the number seven, which is the 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 sort of outlier non recommendation that we that we have in our in our list of recommendations. Uh, and uh, I think I think seven was just was just more of a um, uh, maybe maybe not right now because it's it's you know we don't we don't really have the sense that the thing keeping us from having lots of ADUs is the fact that a, a single owner can't have two. You know, that doesn't, it, it seemed pretty clear from the staff presentation that like the big thing that's sort of like the elephant in the room right now is saturation limits. And, um, but you know, uh, if, if city council um, uh, modifies saturation limits and makes those uh, uh, much easier to navigate, then um, you know, three years from now, maybe it will make sense to say, "Hey, what's what's working and what isn't working?" Maybe we could revisit that. So I don't know. I think I think um, a number eight, or or maybe a number seven, maybe just rewrite number seven as what I just said that says, "Hey, uh, here's some, you know, encourage." It's basically this: encourage them to revisit it in a few years, and anticipate the following things that weren't really discussed mm -hmm. though. Okay. Would so you I, be? I, oh, thank you, Philip. Are you done? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I can hear that I'm rambling. So sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, would you uh, care to propose a different language for that this evening, or uh, temporarily remove it and make a recommendation on it at our next meeting? What What would you suggest? Um, yeah, I think I could I could come up with something in the next couple minutes. Um, I started working on it before the meeting, but then the meeting started and. Uh, uh, I, uh, if, if I could, if I could just work on it for a minute or two, I, I, yeah. think, I think we can do it now, but I don't, I don't also mean to like, I don't want to like hold up the proceedings and if people don't think it's a good idea, then, you know, why uh, you, you won't be, I've got some other things I want to discuss before we even ask for a vote, but, um, uh, I think Danny's got his hands up, hand up and then John Gerstel. Yeah, and uh, my only suggestion would be, Philip, that maybe uh, if we have something that's just as kind of like a catch-all, like generally demure towards everything else and say, you know, we understand that um, <laughs> ADUs um, are always going to be somewhat of a work in progress, and we'd encourage other creative uh, solutions as, as have been proposed by other entities as you move forward with this and to keep revisiting it to see what works and what doesn't or something like that rather than give a list of the things that aren't on our list, but they're kind of on our list. You know, if we just have some of this general, I think if we have things that, if we start listing out things beyond the things that we have listed, it just feels to me like it just kind of dilutes the, the emphasis of what we're, we're suggesting here. That's my thought. Okay, thank you, Danny. Um, John Gerstel of Planning Board, also our Planning Board liaison to have. Yeah, thank you. Well, I, I think the letter is is very clear and articulate. I, I just uh, have a suggestion that you may want to uh, think, uh, you know, consider more the the parking uh, uh, paragraph that you've added here, because I think uh, that is the source of uh, a lot of the uh, resistance that uh, that will be found in connection with ADUs. And uh, the, the reason that it is 
that there's resistance is because it is a real issue in, in many neighborhoods that uh, is difficult just to wish away. And so my suggestion is to uh, reconsider the, the parking uh, recommendation. Uh, it's, it uh, is, a, is a real matter, and uh, I think it has to be dealt with appropriately. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. Um, we have had some good discussion about that. I agree with you that that could be a hot button that would inadvertently increase uh, opposition to ADU reform. Um, so the way our discussion went, if I can summarize and anybody can jump in, is uh, the areas that have limited parking tend to be the ones that are the most walkable and transit and bike friendly. And you might get um, a self-selecting group of tenants who tend not to own cars and would not be contributing to the problem. Now, that's a speculative, but I think it's a valid uh, point of view. Would anybody else on the board like to comment on that? Well, I could talk all day about, about parking minimums uh, if, if I was prepared to do it. Uh, <laughs> I have lots of opinions about it. Um, I guess uh, I, don't, I don't remember ever um, uh, referencing Donald Shoup's the high cost of free parking uh, in, the, in one of these meetings, but um, that's, a, that's a, uh, an essay that I'd recommend everyone read. Um, I, I'd like to point out that uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts, uh, just uh, this week announced that they're eliminating all parking minimums uh, throughout the city. Um, and yeah, it's been a real, um, sorry if you can hear the piano banging in the background. Um, it's, it's been a real uh, mind shift to, you know, we have, a, we have a very car centric city here in Boulder, a very car centric country in, in North America, US, USA. Um, and it, it's, gonna, it's gonna take, uh, um, uh, you know, some, some inversion of, of reasoning perhaps to, to wrap our heads around the fact that parking minimums uh, make, make things worse than before they make things better. I, I guess that's all I'm gonna say for now. John has a follow-up comment or question? Uh, yeah, I, I frankly, I agree with uh, Philip and uh, I'm no fan of uh, encouraging people to to drive and have a car. But there are many ways of dealing with the issue. And one of them would be, for example, to have uh, ADUs in which uh, the residents may not own cars or have cars in the neighborhood. Uh, that could be uh, put into some sort of a uh, regulation that would uh, deal with that issue. So my point in mentioning this is not to say that everyone needs to have off-street parking. It is to say just that it needs to be ex explicitly considered and dealt with in a way that will satisfy the neighborhoods and the city in general. Just that. Thanks. Thank you, John. Um, so Hab did a tour of affordable housing projects a few weeks ago. It was informal, not a meeting. And um, I noted when we went by a senior affordable housing project at the Lutheran Church just off Broadway, that they have a, a parking garage. They have structured parking as part of that project. I believe it's 16 apartments. And um, you know, it was a transparent structure. You could see into it. I didn't see any cars in that parking structure. And I don't know if that's because the residents don't have them or because it's paid parking through the Cajun network. Could you perhaps clarify that, Jay? And that's a, a downtown, you know, parking challenge location. That was the Trinity Commons one. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, Michael. I, I can't speak intelligently about the parking okay. utilization at that site. Okay. Well, I would draw that comment then because it's very speculative. Um, would anybody on the board care to uh, amend our parking statement, or would you prefer to let it ride at this point? Okay, well, it's not a vote, but it sounds like we're not going to get a uh, request to revise. Um, I'm going to do two things. One is quickly run through 
the recommendation for members of the public who are attending and might know, want to know what we were thinking and how we got there. And then I do want to discuss um, some of Kurt Nordbeck's ideas a little bit to see if we might want to move toward a recommendation on some of those in the future. So HAB has spent several months studying this issue. Um, we've had really excellent presentations from city officials on giving us uh, metrics and facts about ADU production, who lives in ADUs, how many are rented, and so forth. What's changed um, <clears throat> since uh, the last round of reform in 2019, the policy changes. Um, com comparison to peer communities, that's where we learned that there was not a single peer community uh, with a saturation limit, for example. And, uh, and then we got input from housing advocates, primarily the Bozing, Boulder Housing Network, uh, that really helped us shape our recommendations. So, and I'm just gonna bullet point these. Uh, recommendation one is eliminate saturation limits. Um, we've talked about that a little bit. Two is eliminate parking requirements. Three is eliminate minimum lot sizes for ADUs. Currently, you can't apply for an ADU if you are, live on a, a home plot that's less than 5,000 square feet. There aren't that many home sites like that in Boulder, but it could be an inhibiting factor. Uh, four was revise ADU size limits. Uh, that are formulas that um, relate the size of the ADU to the size of the uh, primary dwelling. And that would essentially uh, liberalize that ratio and make it possible to build larger ADUs that could accommodate more than a single person. Um, and then we talked about um, excluding the square footage of a basement of a detached ADU from a size calculation. There's certain situations where people uh, have a basement they'd like to convert um, and they're not able to use all the space because of that ratio in place, which is kind of silly. You just have to leave leftover space instead of creating more livable space, even though that space already exists. Um, item five is create pre-approved ADU plans. Um, numerous uh, communities have done that. Basically allows the applicant to pick uh, pre-approved designs from a pattern book. And it's an uh, attempt to uh, speed up the process uh, time is money um, and make it easier to do an ADU without doing a custom design. Uh, six was streamline the entitlement process. We talked about um, uh, combining the AB application to make it a one-stop process instead of a two-stop of entitlement and uh, code compliance. Uh, and then uh, item seven, which we've talked about and are not recommending in this draft in any cases, allowing a detached ADU uh, in addition to, a an attached, allowing a detached ADU in addition to an attached ADU. Um, not quite ready to endorse that one so far. Uh, so that's where we're coming from and where we could possibly going. Um, I do wanna talk, uh, make my own comments on Kurt's letter. Uh, I think the condo conversion idea is really interesting. Um, that's uh, one we could maybe study a little further and make a recommendation down the road. Um, I'm not quite sure I understand the second one about finance. And uh, then there's the issue of um, whether ADU should be owner occupied. Actually, I mean, ADU's primary residence should be owner occupied. I strongly believe that that uh, restriction should remain in place. I think that's just basic neighborhood preservation to have uh, the uh, homeowner uh, overseeing the property as a landlord and not be an absentee landlord for two properties. Um, others may disagree with that, but that's how I feel about that one. So um, any other comments about um, measures we could consider outside of what's in our written recommendation? Um, well, I have a point of clarification. Um, is um, uh, city council is going to um, debate ADUs soon? Is that right? Uh, uh, do, we, I heard, do, we know, do we know when that is? I heard that's November. It was going to be October. And then the, the mayor was called out of town to do a sister city visit mm -hmm. uh, and was not going to be. So do we have a date on that? Jay, we do. do. Uh, November 10th is the study session. 
but keep <clears> in mind, um, ADUs is getting discussed with, um, I think, three other council priorities. So I'm not sure how detailed the discussion is going to be around it. Okay, well, put that on your calendar to at least um, listen in or attend because council meetings are uh, live again. Well, I guess the question I'm asking is, um, you know, uh, uh, it's it. Uh, it feels like with all of these different subjects that we're going to be addressing over, over the months and over the years, there's always like lots of directions and there's always kind of more details that can be delved into. And um, um, I just want to, I just kind of wanted to ask the question of like, how productive is it to um, contemplate, you know, three, six more months of like exploring all the things we could explore as they relate to ADUs or, or are we really just like talking about what can we pass tonight that we can recommend to city council before November 10th, before we start moving on to other things. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I don't know, just maybe if you could just fill me in on that to help me understand. Yeah. Thanks. That's a great question. Um, I think uh, a, we should consider this packet tonight with whatever modifications board members would like to propose and vote on it, um, not waiting to consider any additional recommendations. And if we want to make additional recommendations, uh, I don't think we should you know, dwell on it for six months. It could happen much sooner than that. The council meeting on the 10th, I believe, is a study session. I don't think they're going to vote on anything related to ADUs, but council is motivated to move forward in 2023 on this issue. So um, yeah, I don't think there'd be any, uh, if, if you're suggesting there might be some delay, I don't think there's any need for that uh, with this packet in front of us or uh, not a lot of delay with other measures we might consider. Danny. So I, I, think, I think it's pretty imperative um, and given the uh, uh, bandwidth that we've uh, dedicated to this in, in the latter part of this of this year, I think it's pretty imperative that we get this out there and get it out there before the first study session. Whether or not they're going to vote on that is is not as material as saying that we've worked through this and we've come down and distillated it to the things that we feel are most important and the most driving things. You know, um, we we can uh, the the list is almost endless, and that's why I, I you know I do support some kind of catch-all uh, um, you know, conclusion like we talked about with Philip just before. But you know, once we start getting to some of these things, I mean, frankly, like condominium conversion, you can say that it doesn't affect density, but uh, there are a lot of people that can say that it does. And it, it creates its own debate and its own set of uh, considerations and circumstances. And so to try to throw some more things in there in the fly, I'm just not comfortable with now. I think that we've really tried to work through um, some of these things. I think that it's a very thoughtful letter. It's been a very thoughtful process. And I think it's really important for us to take that thoughtfulness and turn it into something concrete that we can provide to the city council. So whenever they want to start working on it, they can. And, and, and our thoughts are in front of them in a timely basis so that they can do so. Um, there's always a chance for revisiting something as we talked about a few years down the line. But I, I really think right now to get something out um, that we finalized today and get something out to them prior to the 10th is imperative from my perspective. Um, I want to see us provide those recommendations and not just continue to, to think about, okay, here's another thing and ooh, shiny, right? Um, and, and, and so my, my, my strong feeling is, you know, I want to see something move forward today. Great. Um, I, thank you, Danny. I hope that's what I just said. But yeah. uh, if, if you were uh, not agreeing with me, I will say I, I agree with you. Okay, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> I agree with you. I'm just saying, just trying to make it clear. Yeah, I think, you know, yeah. We, we, to, should, we should vote on what's in front of us and get it to council uh, before. Yeah. And, and I before think I'll just say too that the condominium conversion thing is, um, from a legal perspective, from a policy perspective, is much more complex than than kind of we're letting on there. Are, I I can think of 20 issues just off the top of my head. You know, that we'd have to work through with something like that. You know, it's it's separate ownership. It's 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 not, you know, there there are a lot of things that go with it. And so, you know, so I'm not dismissing it out of hand at all. I'm just saying, you know, we've we've put a lot of work into this. 
you know, we can revisit things later on, but let's go to this and, and start thinking about what other things we might be able to tackle. Great. Um, anyone else? Yeah, I, just to follow up. Um, so uh, I appreciate both of your comments, Danny and Michael, and it, it sort of, honestly, it kind of takes the, um, uh, well, I, I kind of, after your first comment, um, earlier about uh, uh, the proposal I made for a, a, a recommendation seven, I kind of took the wind out of my sails and I didn't really start writing it here while, while there was uh, other discussion going on. And I'm kind of I, like, I kind of agreed. I, I, like, I liked what you said about uh, just um, having a positive statement about the things that we actually um, recommend instead of like, you know, here's the laundry list of, um, mm -hmm possible things we could have considered, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, we know what that list is and uh, we can, we can, you know, bring that up when, when this comes around again. Um, so my, my recommendation is actually, um, uh, I, I wouldn't mind seeing number seven just taken out because it does have that sort of negative, like, here's what we didn't endorse. And, and like, I don't, I don't actually don't see the point in having it there. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that, that would be one, one suggestion. And then, um, th also, also, well, maybe I should just make that suggestion before I. Yeah, I think that's a good suggestion. I was, um, you know, trying to run down the clock while you wrote something there, but not, not necessary, perhaps, uh, John Gerstle. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I don't get to vote on this, but I, I think Danny's uh, suggestion made a lot of sense to me, uh, all of all of his comments. And in addition, the idea of uh, condominiumizing a, a home in an ADU, uh, I can say from a planning board uh, perspective, is a very complicated decision that would take a long time to move ahead with if, if the decision was, in fact, to move ahead with that. Uh, so I think Danny uh, expressed it very well, and I, I support his thoughts on that. Great. So, um, oh, Philip, your hand is up again. Yeah, because um, I, I, I had another comment. That's the next thing. I don't know if you were going to follow up on what uh, John just said. Uh, <laughs> Go on to the next or, thing. Yeah, I'd yeah, say. Okay. Uh, so, um, uh, kind of with the with what Danny was saying about you know let's uh, and, and you Michael saying about let's let's um, get a version of this to to vote on tonight and get it to city council. I'm I'm all for that. I like that idea, um, which makes me think like uh, you know of of the other six, uh, we should you know if if we have comments it, instead of having them be to me, it seems like productive discussion would be about the six that we've that we've written down here, mm -hmm. rather than trying to uh, uh, pretend like we can come up with another recommendation this evening that would go into this. Um, mm -hmm. That's my sense. Anyways, the of, of of the ones that perhaps should could could use some discussion um, is uh, just to circle back to John's comment about parking requirements. Um, and um, you know, one of the things I was thinking about while he was uh, expressing that concern is um, just you know thinking about how when when people have expectations about free parking for their cars in the streets, and those and the reality of the situation doesn't meet their expectation, that's when you get people throwing punches, you know, uh, in front of their houses. And um, so that's we don't want to create. Uh, a situation where uh, <laughs> we're, we're encouraging violence, you know, um, and I don't know if there's if there's simple language or if there's um, ways of, of thinking about, you know, setting expectations or, um, you know, the notion of um, of actually having uh, uh, restrictions on car ownership. I don't I, I, I feel like that may have came up uh, and maybe Jay weighed in on that. I can't remember now. What's been discussed around that? If that's if that's something that is simple or complicated, it sounds complicated. <laughs> Do 
Terry. Um, I don't know if I'm missing something, but I thought we talked about all this stuff last meeting and came up with this letter and kind of agreed on all these points. And, and that was my understanding of things. Maybe I misunderstood it. Are we just want to rehash it again or just to double check or because I we talked about all this stuff, didn't we? Or am I thinking of a different meeting? <laughs> uh, hey, Terry, you're the one who likes long meetings. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we did. I think it's OK to, <laughs> to uh, do a little navel gazing on this before we vote. It's uh, important stuff. Um, no I just I just wanted to see if if yeah, because, you know, we talked about the parking. We, I don't know. I just I just remember having all talking about all this stuff. We talk yeah. about it again. Problem. I'm here. But, you know, um, uh, in on on if my memory is right. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll share a conversation I had with our mayor um, about uh, you know how controversial Hab should get uh, versus just strictly thinking about policy and what's the right thing. And what he said is, let council worry about the politics and have make the recommendations. Um, let call them as you see them. So I, I agree with that. I don't think we need to tiptoe uh, around some of these recommendations. Uh, and if council decides they want to implement it as a as a pilot project uh, or revisit it in a year, I think that should be up to them. Yeah, I mean, yeah, these are just our thoughts. I mean, this isn't going to get adopted in the law, you know, based on this vote, right? This goes to council. They take it into consideration. And, and if this is what we think, then let's suggest it. I, I was under the impression last meeting, we, we vetted all these six, seven topics. I do agree with Philip that why include number seven? Because really it doesn't matter. Yep. Value. <laughs> but, but even if you do or if you don't, not a big deal. That's, that's mm -hmm. just my thought. <clears throat> um, I'm going to keep us moving ahead here. Uh, if we were to vote on this, excluding number seven, do we need to have a separate vote uh, to <clears throat> strike that? Or can we just say we're adopting recommendations one through six, and that's how we send them to council? You just need someone to make a motion with whatever you want to include in your recommendation. And then you can modify it. Uh, Terry Pamos. Ah, on the heels of my last comment, I move that we <laughs> that we submit the letter as written. <laughs> uh, no deleting number seven. I don't feel that passionate about it. If somebody else does, no problem. Make an amendment. <laughs> okay, we haven't had an amendment before. How do we do that? Uh, somebody, uh, my understanding is somebody approves with amending it, or we get a second with the amendment of removing number seven, then we vote on the amendment. Yeah, I think we need a motion. If we're going to amend it, we need a motion for somebody to amend it yeah. as proposed, and then we vote yeah. on that. Right now, Terry's motion is good. We already had, we already, yeah, we didn't, we didn't approve that either. So there's a motion there to approve it as is. Um, so Terry, I, so we probably need a second or vote on that unless you pull that back to see if somebody wants to amend, but. No, I'm good with the way it is. Well, I'll, I'll second that motion. Okay, um, so I'm confused. <laughs> um, does that mean we have to vote this down and then get another motion? Correct. Or you can have a friendly amendment. Friendly amendment, yeah. Let, let, let's have a friendly amendment, that'd be easier. Who would like to make a friendly amendment? You can make it, Michael. I can make it, okay. Uh, <laughs> I offer a friendly amendment to uh, accept the uh, recommendation on ADUs as written, striking item number seven. Somebody's got to second that. Oh, I second. Wonderful. Now you can vote. Okay. Let's vote on that. Uh, all in favor of this recommendation with the friendly amendment, say aye. 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 The motion passes 5-0. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. <laughs> Hab, Hab has gone from uh, glacial to, uh, you know, at least like a slow stroll. This is good. <laughs> really good. Uh, now I got a brisk pace. Brisk pace. This is a brisk pace. This is a brisk pace. 
<laughs> what did we you just? Know, we, you know, just, my we, just, we just approved the, the letter for recommendation. Is that what happened? We did. That's what happened. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> with the amendment. I wasn't sure if that was approving it. Approving the you know, I'm, I'm, seven, but yeah, okay. I'm getting a little freaked out because my sister accused me of looking like John Fetterman. And as I'm looking at this Zoom, I think I do. Uh, I don't know if I <laughs> saw that debate last night. Um, okay, strike that comment. Um, <laughs> Uh, we can now move on to a discussion on a future listening session. Does anyone have any ideas about that? It looks like. So can I add a little bit of context, Michael? Yes, please. Um, so this will come up as part of the staff update, but um, so we're, we're returning to in-person um, with our next meeting and we'll talk about that too. But um, as I mentioned that the chairs were thinking well, maybe this is an opportunity to have another listening session. Um, and it's probably good for the, the group to think about what are the what are the right topics. Um, and we had a list of topics before. Um, I'm sure folks will remember those. But anyway, just a little bit of context for you. In, um, can you would you mind giving a quick introduction to what a listening sessions are and like what, yeah. what, what the goal is? And um, and I, I, I have to kind of retract that too, because um, what I learned about returning in person with the boards and commissions is that boards and commission members will return in person, but the public will still be remote. So it still doesn't really lend itself to a listening session as well. Mm -hmm. Say that again, I'm sorry. You were breaking up. Oh, sorry. So the, um, the direction from council and city is that the boards and commissions will return in person, but the community will still can only participate remotely. They will not be in meetings with us. Got it. I think that I think that kind of um, obviates the notion of a listening session because the whole. So I'd probably say, I, I I you know we've had this conversation before, but I'd still say I I, I like to table it until we have some idea we might have this in person because I mean. Obviously, it's important for us to be in person uh, for those, but I, I really do believe having the public there, um, having them be able to communicate with each other as well as with us um, is really at the core of what makes the listening session effective. And so rather than just do it for the sake of doing it, I think once we have a idea, I'm assuming that'll be next phase or whatever it is, so whenever that comes, that's when we can kind of plan for it. Okay, uh, so quick, quick review for anyone who doesn't know what a listening session is. Um, it's an opportunity to hear from uh, residents on a particular issue. Um, uh, I think they were, I, and I, I did not attend any of the live ones. I wasn't on the board yet. I heard they were pretty effective on certain topics. The one I did attend as a new board member was on the subject of housing insecurity resulting from COVID issues. And we only had a couple of um, residents show up for that in there. Uh, didn't really get a whole lot of it. So that's where we decided to table the idea for a while. Um, it just wasn't effective in a virtual format. And there seems to be uh, sentiment, if not consensus, that uh, this is not going to be effective until it's a in-person, high-touch, face-to-face meeting. And, and I'll, just, I'll just pivot off of that and say, you know, um, if you look at that one, it was really awkward just having it on Zoom. And you know the conversation we had in the beginning of the meeting about the notion of, you know, three minutes back and forth between people that are speaking during public comment, et cetera. The nice thing with the listening session, it is much more conducive to kind of an ebb and flow conversation where a lot of people get a chance to to listen, talk, ask questions, ask questions of each other, um, where it's 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 less of a formal structure that than you have in a, in a typical board meeting. And so I think that's why it's great, and I think that's why. To see it again, I mean, I'd love to have another one, but I, I think to see it again when it's live would, would be terrific. But you know, probably we wait till then because it just Zoom just doesn't um, lend itself to that that type of of structure. Well, can I push back on that just a little bit? Um, uh, if if you know the public's not going to be allowed in for another year. Um, then that means we wouldn't have a listening session for a long time. If it's going to be three months, six months, do we do we have some sense about that? Um, we don't know. Jay shrugs his shoulders. Um, uh, but you know, one, one 
thought is that, hey, we, we tried a listening session on Zoom and it was related to COVID and housing insecurity and it was a flop and, you know, lesson, lesson learned. It, it, but maybe, you know, maybe we ought to try again every 12 months or so uh, and, and see if, see if we could try it again, see if, see if it, I don't, I don't necessarily assume Zoom can't, can, um, uh, can't um, facilitate a listening session. Um, I also like uh, would hope that even if the, the public is welcome, that it would be a hybrid so that people aren't, that aren't comfortable with, you know, that they're immunocompromised or whatever can, can participate. Um, so, I mean, part of, part of my feeling is like, well, we, we maybe ought to figure out how to make Zoom work so that it works for the people who can't attend in person or it, it works in the meantime, if, if it's gonna be a while. Um, thank you, Philip. Uh, is there any potential to do the type of hybrid that Philip is suggesting according to the city's rules or are those rules evolving to give us hope that could happen? That's a question for Jay. I mean, that's my assumption is that moving forward, the um, people will be able to participate remotely um, indefinitely. So I think Zoom has taught us that that's a great way to get people to attend public meetings. Um, it's much more convenient than having to show up in person. Um, is, that, is that where you're going with that? The way I understood it was, um people could zoom in if they wanted to and if they wanted to attend in person they could come and interact with the board in person right at some point in the future i just don't know when that'll be when that option will be okay uh i'm, I'm sure i'm sure they'll they'll implement that whenever they start having people come back in every I've, I've been uh going to a lot of public hearings lately and every single one of them has a hybrid model. There's nobody that says nobody that's gone back to in person has said, uh, "Well, you can't zoom either." They always have a zoom function as well. So, yeah, I think that's perfectly fine. Um, and, and Philip, I agree. If it's a year, you, you, that that point's well taken. But you know, I think maybe we just kind of just keep checking in and 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 seeing how that goes. And maybe somewhere, you know, somewhere early into. 2023, if it's not changing, it looks like that's the way it's going to be. And then we can tackle this and figure out the best way to do a Zoom listening session. But, you know, again, I just feel in person definitely works better for that particular forum, that particular type of, of uh, um, uh, structure. Did, did the one Zoom based um, listening session allow for videos? of the participants or was was everyone un, uh, required to keep their video off? No, it allowed for it. Okay, and, okay. Yeah, and, and the other piece, the, I mean, so Hab has talked about listening sessions for years. Um, and I think one of the things that everybody who's been on Hab agrees with is you have to have the right topic. Mm -hmm. uh, not every topic lends itself. So maybe that's just something for the group to think about what is a good topic um, and when's it appropriate? Thank you. Um, one other thing about the Zoom, I'm on another board where the board is in a hybrid format as well. It's a large board, I would say five or six show up in person and 20 Zoom in. And uh, we've had some really good public participation with that board as well. Uh, I just wonder if um, that kind of hybrid format is proposed or possible in Boulder, uh, which would you know, help ensure we have quorums when people are traveling and so forth. Absolutely, Michael. Yeah. If, okay. Uh, I mean, the preference is, would be for members to come in if they can, but if they're traveling out of town. Yeah, or if a member gets, gets COVID, yeah, uh, they, they can still participate. Um, I like Jay's idea about discussing topics. Does anybody have any good ones that we could put in the hopper for future discussion? Missing middle is always a big one. Maybe that's too broad. Uh, home ownership in Boulder. Inclusionary zoning, yep. zoning reform. I was going to say, Michael, that's one and the same. 
ownership and middle income. <laughs> um, I'll talk about inclusionary housing, Philip, um, and what HAD's role will be with that too. How about housing pilots? Maybe that's not great for listening session, but I always like to I always like to talk about uh, David Adamson's uh, co-op slash micro condo uh, project. I would I'm going to retract that. I don't think that's probably appropriate for a listening session, but um, I just want to keep it on the radar. Um. This could be lively. Uh, see what you think. Uh, something on neighborhood character um, that could bring in zoning. It could bring in very large custom homes. It could bring in lots of issues. And um, it might generate a lot of interest because it's something a lot of people care very passionately about. Um, well, how about if we put this on the agenda for our next meeting and we'll give people a chance to think about it? Oh, I, 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 could, um, I, I just thought of something else, uh, that, uh, a meta comment. And um, one, one thing that might make um, a listening session effective and increase participation is if uh, we are, again, we're anticipating something that city council is very likely to, to bring up so that the listening session is uh, relevant to the work plan. Um, so like, you know, one thing that came, that came, and the reason I thought of this is because one of the things that came up in my mind is, uh, you know, occupancy reform. And I know that's something that city council has talked about. And so, I mean, and I don't mean to, to single that issue out. It, whatever, whatever is like a major thing coming in the spring of 2023 for, city council's work plan maybe if we had a listening session three months ahead of that that's that was on that subject and then subsequent discussion from hab and recommendation would dovetail into you know productive recommendations for them when when they get around to having a study session and you know on, on whatever those topics are so that's, mm -hmm. that's that might be a good way to engage and make make it relevant I really like that idea specific. It's been batted around for a few years. Council has stated an intent to act on it and perhaps have doing a listening session could uh, speed things up a little. Yeah, well, that, that, that's another way of thinking about it, yeah. Again, we could brainstorm this more tonight, uh, but I think it deserves its own agenda item. Well, it has an agenda item, but um, actually coming with some topics to prepared to discuss at the next meeting would be really, really valuable since we're not in a hurry to act on this yet. Um, any other comments on listening sessions or we can go on to item C? Okay. Item C is a proposal to uh, combine our November, December meetings because of holiday schedules into one meeting on Wednesday, December 7th. How do our board members feel about that? I think that's a great idea. Um, I think that's a perfect uh, time frame as well, right in between the two. So right, yeah. Our, our next two meetings actually would conflict with uh, holiday time. So right, uh, right. And then, we were, right. and then usually we would try to move it like a week ahead or a week behind. We run into a lot of logistic issues too. So I think this way it's kind of right in that hinterland where it should work out really well. Right, uh, Terry, you got one. Uh, I think it's great. My question is, is it uh, 
it'll be in person, I assume, because after November we can be in person. Is that right? Correct. I think that's right. Right. Yep. Yeah. And I have so been we uh, reserved already for it, so we'd be in uh, in the uh, the Brenton Building on Al uh, at Broadway in Alpine. Oh wow! Jay, are you guys going to feed us? And we'll feed you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Can, can we put a holiday spin on it or something? Can we, you know? Yeah, I'll wear a Santa hat and, you know, all that. <laughs> all right, all right. If we're going to be fed, I'd prefer to have two meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Just bring Tupperware. <laughs> that sounds good uh, to me. Yeah. Uh, I, we need to I, assume there's, I assume there's precedent for this. Do we do this every year? Yes. Uh, by chance? Yeah. I mean, often what happens is, you know, December gets canceled and Thanksgiving moves the November meeting. So this is actually actually new, but I think it works well. I do too. Yep. Okay. Do we need to vote on that, or we do we just do that? Yep. Need to vote to okay. cancel both, or basically consolidate the two meetings. Okay. Before. Do I hear a motion to uh, combine our November December meetings into one on December seventh? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Another motion passes five zip. Oh, we're like the we're like the Houston Astros. I love it. Uh, I don't like that. I don't like that. Uh, no, I don't like the Houston Astros either. I was saying steamrolling in the opposition as it was. <laughs> I don't like don't say that. I mean Yankees. Or, or rather not having, oh God, the Yankees. Uh, uh, <laughs> Item six matters from the board. Oh, I'm sorry, matters from staff. <laughs> I think we've already covered item A, but do you have anything to add to that, Jay? No, uh, Tiffany will send out uh, revised meeting invites for December 7th and cancel the other two. Um, any other questions about returning to in-person, how that's gonna work? Yeah, what's the name of the building again? Yeah, uh, it's called um, the Brenton Building, B-R-E-N-T-O-N. -E so it's a current city building that, that was renovated a few years ago. It's actually quite quite beautiful inside. But it's right across from Boulder Community Health, the Pavilion Building. Great, thank you. Okay. We'll send you directions. <laughs> Two blocks from my house, I like it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> item, item B, uh, council study session on inclusionary housing update. Uh, do you have anything to add on that, Jay? Yeah, it should be interesting tomorrow. Uh, it's a study session, and it's really going to be um, a big part of it is just uh, giving a primer to council on how the city's affordable housing program actually works. Um, we have some new members who aren't as familiar with it, but it's also helpful for people that have been on for quite a while. Um, to get that refresher before we start talking about making changes to the inclusionary housing program. Um, and also trying to put it in the context of all the other tools that we have been pursuing to address um, middle income, which is ownership opportunities in Boulder. So I uh, just want to let you know that that was coming tomorrow. Um, also, HAB is going to play a role in helping to uh, shape that uh, proposal to council. So we are proposing to do a, um, uh, in January, sort of an inclusionary housing 101. So similar to what we're doing tomorrow, but sort of a deeper dive into uh, the logistics of how we implement inclusionary housing um, so that you guys have sort of a better understanding for when we start talking about making changes to the program. Um, so it, it's pretty detailed stuff, but I think you'll find it interesting um and i think that's it any questions about that only one um for me uh is that soon enough for us to make a recommendation to council do you think they're going to take their time acting on inclusionary housing updates oh yeah tomorrow is just to say staff is just saying this is our proposed process um and these are the topics that we have in mind so far um it won't go back to council for formal adoption until July at the earliest. 
Oh, okay. So we January is plenty of time for us to start educating ourselves on it. Okay. And we'll be doing the same thing for planning board too, John. <laughs> Double dose. Thanks. Uh, may I mention something? Absolutely. Um, I know planning board writes a letter to city council at the end of each year, um, just letting them know what's on their mind and what they think is important and what they hope council is aware of and might do. And that might be something that that uh, you should be thinking about also, given that you only have very few meetings left this year. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to mention that. So John, did you, is planning board working on their letter? Well, uh, <laughs> we haven't started, but uh, yeah. I know it's always a, a, a struggle at the end of the year to, to yeah. make it happen. But we, we do regard that as pretty important. And so we I will be forgotten about that. So yeah, yeah we do, we do it every year too, John. It's a good point. But um, and thanks but for I usually help. get instructions. I usually get instructions from the city manager's office well in advance. So either I missed okay. it or something's different. Let me find out and I'll get back to you guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, thank you, John, for the reminder, as we did send a letter to council last year, um, we should probably uh, resend that to everybody to uh, make a couple of new members here, remind them what we said, and um, I think sending them a letter is a great idea. And we could put that on the December agenda to review and approve, so we get it out before the end of the year. I agree. Jay, if we got if we sent that in January, so just logistically speaking, so if we had something to finalize or at least to, to consider in, in December and then send it out in January, is that is that bad? Did we miss the cutoff or or would uh, we be able to vote on something like that in absentia electronically? Like in maybe. to finalize it. Maybe if we could chew on that and 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 then maybe try to figure that out and maybe we can address yeah. it at the next chair's uh, meeting so that we have we have a game plan for that because I just realized we're we're up on in it, um, given the the time frame. But if we yeah. if we get that in January, then I think we're fine. You know, I think January might be too late, Danny. To your point, because the the, okay. the council usually has their retreat before the fourth Wednesday. Oh, okay, right. right. So, so maybe see if we can vote on that. If we can have a letter that everybody gets a chance to, or maybe just have a letter proposed ahead of time, but then that'll be a big thing we try to, to finalize mm -hmm. at the December 7th meeting. Yeah. So, so let me uh, look at the, and I'll get back to you because you know oh. typically council um, will provide very specific instructions for the letter. So if you remember in the past, they typically will say, we want you to identify your top two or top three yeah. challenges or, you know, there's always something specific that they're looking for. Yeah. And the fact that we haven't gotten that guidance um, concerns me. So let me look into it and I'll get back to you. Okay. Perfect. Um, this week. If, if we can get that guidance, I hope we do. I'd be happy to draft a letter send it to members at a time as we did with this um, recommendation we approved tonight. And, uh, and you know, we could potentially vote it on December 7th, assuming everyone's had a chance to think about it. We can discuss it in person. That sounds great. Okay, so Jay, you'll get back to us on council directions and- Yep. Great. Um, any other questions about the council study session tomorrow? I hope you'll all tune in and listen to that. Okay, um, on to item seven, uh, meeting debrief. Um, we had a good meeting, I thought. Uh, we had several public participants who approved our minutes, uh, approved a recommendation to council with six uh, discrete recommendations on ADUs. Uh, at least started our discussion on listening session topics, which we will have as a formal agenda item in December. Agreed to reschedule the November and December meetings due to holidays to one meeting on December 7th. 
I got an update on returning to in-person meetings and the council study session, inclusionary housing coming up tomorrow. Um, calendar check, we've already talked about December 7th and uh, we talked about tomorrow. Any other calendar items we might consider? Any additions to the summary I just provided in the debrief? Okay. Um, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor? Thank Bye. you all. Wow. Wow. Um, Good evening, guys. Go Have, have a great dinner. Night, guys. Thank you. See you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Appreciate it. Happy, happy Halloween. Happy <laughs> Halloween. Yeah. I know. Bye.